2020 is already turning out to be a great year for us here at United Brothers, because as of recently we have hit 500 subscribers. And 2020 is going to mark 6 years since we started uploading videos to the miracle service called YouTube. And in those 6 years we've brought you all kinds of videos ranging from gaming, to radio control, and we've even stepped slightly into the world of cars. But by far our most popular videos have been our RC reviews, and we've done a good amount of them over the past few years. And even though we have more RC reviews for you in the near future, we thought we'd celebrate reaching 500 subscribers by taking a look back at what we've flown or hovered to get us to where we are now. To start this trip down memory lane, we need to look back on the cooler days of fall back in 2015, where we reviewed the Park Zone Artisan. This amazing flyer was one of the first four channel planes we flew, and it was also the first time we experienced the then-new Horizon Hobby AS3X system. The Artisan surprised us with how gentle of a flyer it was, but it was also a great performer when you wanted it to be. We were also very impressed with its ability to maintain a very respectable glide slope, and we still to this day have never seen a plane of its class do it the way this one could. Next on our list was the SK450 custom quadcopter that Damon had built. It was Damon's first serious build and a pretty impressive one at that. This quad was surprisingly very easy and forgiving to fly. It was also a very light and durable frame, but unfortunately the ESCs that we were running weren't built for a rotary application, so this did cause some control issues. Next we flew the Hercules custom quadcopter Damon had built. This quad had been specifically built for filming, but we also had a great time flying it around for fun. It was a pretty stable platform for what it was, but it still had its drawbacks. But the build did stick around with us for a couple of years, and it did contribute itself to some of our videos. Our next review takes us back to April 2016, where we flew the Ares FP-75 micro helicopter. This little fixed pitch helicopter was a joy to fly, and it performed well outdoors and indoors, and we couldn't find much to complain about. The helicopter's only real issue is with its gyro system, which could be a bit jittery during certain maneuvers. Next we flew the UMX Beast by Horizon Hobby. This awesome little plane was the first ultra micro we had reviewed, and it was also the first one we flew with the AS3X system. We were blown away with how well this one could fly, especially when the wind picked up. It was a great performer and definitely did not disappoint when it came to the tricks it could do. Next we flew the Trinity Bonsai 600mm flying wing Damn to build. This little wing was a ton of fun to fly and it was our first FPV experience with fixed wing flight. It flew very well and we couldn't get over its very affordable price point. It remains to this day one of our favorite flying wings we have flown. Our next review was on the Stinger 64 by Freewing. This little three cell jet was our first real experience with ducted fan jets. It was a great airplane, but unfortunately it had some serious flight characteristic issues, which its biggest one was how prone it was to tip stalling, which didn't just happen at low speeds, but at high speeds as well. Next we flew the Ares Optum 300 CP. This was a pretty impressive collective pitch helicopter. It was a very forgiving one to fly and it performed well but it did have its drawbacks. Our biggest complaint was the way that Ares had chosen to put all the trim controls on the airframe itself instead of the transmitter. This made trimming the helicopter's controls a hassle, and overall it was a poor decision on Ares' part. Next we flew the Pawnee Brave Night Flyer by Horizon Hobby. This four channel airplane Sally had a very short run with us here on the channel. In fact, it was so short that it never flew again after the shooting of its review. The problems with this model started to show during our time putting it together. We found a lot of the screws and other materials were of a much lower quality than we had come to expect from a Horizon Hobby model. We had also come to find out that the airplane's landing gear was not able to handle the grass landings we had to put it through, and shortly after our review, this model was discontinued, so we were never able to get a hold of spare parts, and sadly, we were never actually able to fly her at night. Next we flew the Inductrix FPV Quad by Horizon Hobby. This little quad was a great flyer and provided a great option for those looking into flying FPV multi-rotor platforms. This little quad surprised us in almost every category, from its exceptional build quality to its fantastic flight characteristics. We were also very impressed with how easy this little quad was to fly, especially for those looking for a beginner FPV experience. 
The only real issue we could find with this awesome platform was it had a very weird tendency to drop altitude if hovered in place for a prolonged period of time. Our next review takes us back to the cold and rainy days of spring back in 2017, where we flew the Beaver by Flyzone. This was our first 5-channel airplane experience, not to mention this was the first plane from Flyzone we had reviewed. This airplane was actually a very nice flyer. It was meant for more scale flying and it did just that very well. It was decked out with lighting, built-in flaps, and a great overall paint scheme. The only real issue we had with this model was that some of the materials involved in its construction were of very poor quality but overall we enjoyed this airplane. Our next review is on the Carbon Z Cessna 150 by Horizon Hobby. This amazing airplane was the largest to date we had flown. Her wingspan was an amazing 83.7 inches or just under 7 feet. She was a 6 channel airplane capable of flying on 4 to 6 cell packs. She was an awesome scale flyer with a lot of performance to match. We absolutely enjoyed this model and so did all of our awesome viewers. At the time of this video, this airplane has been our most popular video for the past three years and currently sits at over 18,000 plus views. We to this day still fly this awesome model, which is an amazing feat when yours truly almost put it in the ground during this review. But this airplane will always be one of my personal all-time favorite flyers. Next we flew the Ares x -Pole. This little racing style quad actually started out as a frame you could buy from Ares, which then the builder could choose his or her own electronics. Which is actually exactly what Damon did. We actually had a lot of good things to say about this frame. First off, it was actually a carbon fiber construction of the highest quality. The second highlight of this quad frame was that each one of the frame arms would actually pivot to reduce the chances of damage and the result of a crash. And the only drawback we could find with this product was that the mount for the camera was fixed. So this made it impossible to adjust the camera for the user's FPV desires. But with that aside, we enjoyed this quad. Next we flew the Optera by E-Flight. This absolutely spectacular flying wing was a joy to fly. It had an impressive 78.7 inch wingspan, or 6.5 plus feet to be exact. This model blew us away with its ease of transportation, its great flying characteristics, and its overall presence in the sky. And we tried our best to find any kind of fault with this model, but this airplane honestly was a masterpiece and we loved every aspect of its design. We then flew the Terra 680 Custom Hexacopter Demon had built. This was our first experience with one of these six-bladed flyers and it was one of the most complex Demon had built up until that time. This cool and complex machine's frame and flight controller were both made by Terra, which was actually a Hobby King brand. Some of this build's highlights was in its capabilities, which included GPS features such as altitude hold, auto landing, and return to home features which we had never experienced until this build. The only noticeable issue with this build wasn't even with the hexacopter itself. It had to do with the gimbal we were using, which did not take too well to quick forward or reverse movements, and a lot of the time it would have difficulties in correcting itself. But with that aside, we had a blast with this one. We then flew the Expert by Horizon Hobby. This small two-cell flying wing had a lot to offer. First off, this small plane was actually a VTOL aircraft, which just in case you don't know what that means, it's to specify an aircraft that can take off, hover, and land vertically, which you could do all those things very well. This little plane also had three flight modes, which included a safe mode for those that were new to fixed wing flyers. This little plane was a big step up in the competition of VTOLs. Specifically what we found most impressive was how Horizon Hobby had decided that the whole aircraft should transition to forward flight, instead of the conventional method of pivoting motors or whole flight services, which this design eliminated a lot of fail points. And despite our best efforts, we could not find any fault with this great flyer and we never got tired of flipping that switch and watching that awesome transition happen right before our eyes. Next we flew the T-28 Trojan by FMS. This two-cell 800mm model was a very fun airplane to fly. It was a nice scaled park flyer that could also perform some very nice aerobatics. We praised this model for its very affordable price point and we also were very impressed by its overall design. This plane was a joy to fly off of runways and it was also a very easy plane to hand launch and grass land. And the only issue we could find was that the airplane, like most others in the Warbird class, was prone to tip stalling if pushed past its flight envelope. 
but we had a great time with this one, and we still fly here to this very day. Next we flew the V-Hawk by Ares. This was another VTOL that had a very hard time catching on from the start. First, Ares had initially tried to sell the V-Hawk for a very optimistic $500 when they were new. The second issue was that this model had one very specific fail point, in which Ares had chosen to make all four of the V-Hawk's individual motors pivot off of a single servo. Which not only was a really bad failure point, but because of this, the V-Hawk almost had a second delay with any inputs the flyer would give it. We also were not that pleased with how it flew in forward fixed wing flight. Myself and Damon both agreed, it was almost like trying to fly a teeter-totter in the sky. But despite all of our criticisms, we still appreciate Ares' efforts in trying to pave the way in VTOL RC aircraft. Next we flew the Commander by E-Flight. This awesome three-cell, five-channel airplane was designed to look like an old-style pylon race plane. But despite its sporty looks, there was actually a very forgiving low-wing monoplane hiding in the fancy paint scheme. This airplane was equipped with Horizon Hobby's AS3X system, and was also equipped with flaps right out of the box. We had an absolute blast with this one, and we gave this airplane a perfect review score, further submitting our enthusiasm for this model. Next we flew the Timber by E-Flight. This two-cell, five-channel micro-airplane took us by total surprise in everything it could do. First off, it was the first micro we had flown that was equipped with flaps, and it still impresses us to this day in which the ease this model can take off in landing grass, which is nothing we have ever been able to say about any other micro-aircraft. This model was also equipped with Horizon Hobby Safe Mode along with the AS3X system. Both these systems, along with the airplane's overall flight characteristics, made this airplane a very great choice for beginners or even those that were well-experienced flyers. And it was for these reasons why I had actually purchased this airplane for my father as a Christmas gift. My father used to be big into the RC airplane scene back in the mid-1990s, but about a month before this review, he flew in on my airplanes and I saw that same inspired look on him I remember seeing on him as a kid. And I had to give him a reason to do it again. And this airplane did not disappoint me in any way and he still enjoys flying this model to this very day. Our next review takes us back to the cold days of February back in 2018, where we flew the Ares Gamma V2. This two-cell, three-channel airplane was an excellent example of what a trainer plane should be. First off, we were very impressed in the means of which this airplane didn't use any kind of gyros or stabilization systems to maintain a stable flight for a new pilot. Instead, Ares had chosen to use a dihedral wing. One other thing we loved about that choice was that this model, once it was put into a turn, wouldn't simply return to level flight once the controls were returned to their neutral position. Instead, the user would have to correct their turn and return the plane back to forward flight. This was a great decision due to the fact this would help an inexperienced flyer learn the muscle memory needed to fly more advanced models later on. The only negatives we could find with this model was it featured a brushed motor, and we also found out during one of our flights, the plane doesn't give any warning that the battery is dead, so we ended up having to perform a dead stick landing during the video. But this airplane came down as gentle as a plane could and inspired us with great confidence to say it was a great beginner airplane. Next we flew the UMX A10 by E-Flight. This small twin-engine ductive fan jet was a nightmare for me from the start. First off, I had actually bought it new a year before this review, but due to this plane's notoriously weak airframe, it forced me to postpone any review on it until I could come up with a solution. Ultimately, I ended up cutting down the bottom of the jet's fuselage and gluing in a carbon spar. To both me and Damon's surprise, it worked amazingly well. Once we had the jet in the air, it was one of the best micros I had ever flown, and it was definitely high on my list of best ducted fan jets. But in the end, me and Damon both agreed that this jet needed some serious attention from E-Flight to address its weaknesses, but we very much did enjoy flying this one. Next we flew the UMX Aero Commander by E-Flight. This brushless twin-engine two-cell airplane was an absolute blast to fly. First off, we were very happy with E-Flight's decision to equip this model with brushless units in place of their traditional brushed ones, which were not only more efficient but gave this airplane incredible speed and performance. And when you throw in great maneuverability and a very forgiving flight envelope, this airplane was a joy to fly. We ended up giving this airplane a perfect review score, and we still stand by our rating because this one was very deserving of it.
Next we flew the Crossfire by Ares. This 3 cell racing quad was actually a very nice airframe to fly. But like anything, it did have its drawbacks. First off, at the time we reviewed it, it was actually right after they had been discontinued. Second, because of its old design, Damon had some issues with trying to program the airframe's old boards. But once Damon was able to program them, they turned out to be incredibly fun machines to fly. And this quad was a great value due to the fact it was a complete FPV equipped airframe. And besides the negatives, we gave this quad a very positive review. Next we flew one of Damon's custom creations. This small racing quad was the fastest airframe to date. It featured the QAV210 carbon fiber mini frame, along with four Emax 2400 kV brushless motors. And when you paired its power plant to a four cell pack, this little quad was a very quick and agile machine. We were also very impressed with the run cam split Damon had used for the quad's FPV camera. This new FPV camera allowed us to capture HD quality videos, which we had never been able to do previously. All in all, it was a very cool build. Next we flew the Beaver by FMS. This massive 2000mm model was an absolute joy to fly. First off, this 6-cell, six 6-channel six giant was one of the most forgiving airplanes to fly. It featured LED lighting, built-in flaps, and a very unique glider tow hook servo, which we still have yet to try out. We were very impressed by its scale presence in the sky, and she had a lot of power when you needed it. We also loved its landing gear setup. With its large wheels, it could take off of almost any surface, including tall grass. We also love the ease of transport and disassembly with this model. All in all, this awesome giant got a perfect review score by us, and she will always be one of my all-time personal favorites. Next we flew the Allura by Ares. This 3-cell, 4-channel glider was actually a very decent glider. First off, the airframe featured a very unique tilted 6-blade prop. But due to the prop's position at full power, this would actually cause the glider to descend pretty rapidly, which on a couple of occasions during our review tested my reaction time. Awesome! That was real good! <laughs> Little bounce off the ground, never hurt anybody. But with that aside, as long as you modulate the power, this was actually a very nice glider to fly. And at the end of our review, me and Damon both agreed this was a great airframe and it would make a great first 4-channel plane for someone. Next we flew the Quantum by Ares. This medium-sized and remarkably lightweight quadcopter was actually a very nice airframe to fly. We praised it for its affordable price point and for the fact that this quad was FPV ready. We also really appreciated the rechargeable battery that Ares had chosen to use in their transmitter with a built-in screen. This was a very nice change compared to using the conventional AA or AAA batteries. And the only real issues we could find with this model was in its rather light and yet flimsy design, but overall it got a very good score from us. Next we flew the Ares Recon HD. This small one-cell quadcopter came with a built-in camera which you could link to either a pair of FPV goggles or an FPV screen. We were actually very happy with the performance this one offered. We also really like this one's overall build quad. It was meant to be mostly a quad you'd fly indoors, but on a calm day it can handle the outdoor flying very well. Overall this quad got a great review score by us and we definitely enjoyed flying this one. Next we flew the P51D Mustang by E-Flight. This spectacular 1200mm model was an absolute dream to fly. It was capable of flying on 3 to 4 cell packs. It was also a 6 channel airplane equipped with retracts and flaps right out of the box. The aircraft was also equipped with Horizon Hobby's AS3X system, along with safe mode. Now when it came to flying this airplane, myself and Damon were blown away with how docile this warboard was to fly. And we were very impressed with its unwarbird like stall characteristics. It was very easy to control if put into a stall, and we weren't able to find any of the typical tip stalling warbirds are usually associated with. And when you add in 5 minute plus flight times and exceptional power and maneuverability, we then and still to this day stand behind the perfect rating we gave this awesome airplane. Next we flew the Champ by Hobby Zone. This small, one-cell, three-channel airplane was designed to be a gentle first step into the RC aviation world for a new flyer. It was very lightweight and extremely docile. It was very easy to hand launch or take off from roads or parking lots. 
And if you were to lose it, its super lightweight design meant that even falls from a good height wouldn't cause any damage to the airframe. And when you add in its great overall price for a ready-to-fly package, myself and Damon both agreed it fulfilled its role as a beginner airplane very well. Next we flew the F-22 by flight test. This was our first flight test plane we had ever reviewed. This F-22 was one of many different foam core models flight tests offered. We paired the one we were reviewing with their CPAC and we were also flying on an 800mAh 3 cell battery. This model turned out to be a very fun plane to fly. It was docile with excellent performance to match. Myself and Damon agree that this was an intermediate airplane and would be a great choice for someone with a little bit of flight experience in 4 channel airplanes. And when you pair that with a great overall price point, this model was very impressive. Next we flew the Ares Gamma V2 Pro. This 3 cell 4 channel trainer was actually a fairly decent aircraft to fly. At the time we reviewed this, Firelands, the company that owned the Ares brand, had decided they no longer had any further interest to pursue radio control air products, and decided they would stick to their RC car lineups, officially shutting down the Ares brand in 2018. As sad as the news was to hear, we still were very excited to review this aircraft. The airplane was very docile and had just the right amount of power. But it did have its weak points. First, we did not like the fact Ares had decided to use a single servo to operate both ailerons. Myself and Damon saw this decision as a potential failure point. We also did not like how fragile the plane's main landing gear was, but with our criticisms aside, we both saw why this was one of Ares' best-selling models, and it did do very well at some inverted low passes. Next we flew the F-27 by E-Flight. This awesome model was a high-speed delta wing configuration capable of running on 3-4 to four cell packs. This airplane was also equipped with safe mode in the AS3X system. We praise this model for its ease of transportation with its snap-on, snap-off wings. And we also love the plane's ability to be an FPV platform if you chose to buy the FPV nose cone that E-Flight sold separately. We also loved how easily the aircraft could fly slow and docile and still be able to fly at speeds in excess of 105 miles per hour, or for our friends in other places, that's 168 kilometers per hour. We were also very impressed with how easy this model was to control and the result of a stall. And the only issue we could find with this model was a minor one at that. Damon found it was better to lower the plane's expo due to its insane roll rate. But other than that, this model was an absolute blast to fly. Next we flew one of Damon's custom creations. The frame was a Diatone 2018 GT M3, equipped with four Luminaire motors and four Hobby King 20 amp ESCs. And to power this small monster was a 3 cell LiPo. The first couple attempts at a flight oh. were stopped due to some tuning issues, but after Damon oh. made a couple adjustments this quad flew awesome. <laughs> the speeds this quad could reach was incredible. Damon estimated its speed to be right around 65 miles an hour, or 104 kilometers per hour. Damon showed off the quad's acro abilities, and then to my surprise, Damon wanted me to fly it in gyro mode. So all in all, we both loved this quad, and it did contribute itself to some of the aerial footage you see in our later reviews. Next we flew the Crusader II by Ares. This 4-channel 3-cell airplane was the last full-size model we reviewed from Ares. And we have to say, it was sad Ares was shut down because this airplane was one heck of a final hoorah for the brand. The airplane was a complete improvement from the other models from Ares we had tested before. It had an awesome and yet strong tricycle landing gear setup. They also had used two servos for the Crusader's ailerons, which was a very pleasant surprise to us, since Ares was known for using a single servo in some of their other models. The airplane was a very forgiving and yet powerful performer. We had an absolute blast, and I myself had a great time doing some low inverts with this model. So all in all, it was an amazing and yet a sad final product for Ares. Next we flew the FT Cruiser by Flight Test. This awesome model was the second foam core plane from Flight Test we had reviewed. It was a twin engine 4 channel airplane powered by a 3 cell battery. This plane was also equipped with differential thrust, allowing us to pull off some awesome flat spins. This airplane was a nice scale flyer with a lot of power when you needed it. The aircraft was unfortunately prone to tip stalling during hard turns or hard pullouts. 
Myself and Damon suggested this plane was definitely for experienced intermediate flyers, but we had an absolute great time with this one and it still remains as our favorite flight test plane to this very day. Next we flew the UMX F-27 by E-Flight. This small micro was an awesome plane to fly. First off, we were blown away by the fact this small plane ran off of a 3-cell battery. This small plane also came equipped with safe mode along with the AS-3X system. We were very impressed with how this flew almost completely identical to its larger counterpart. It was able to fly at low speeds just as well as high. It was also very controllable in the result of a stall. And the only thing we noticed was that this one needed a lot of trimming out of the box, which was very strange to us since most micro E-Flight planes are usually pretty dialed in. But overall, we had a great time with this model, and it still stands as Damon's favorite micro airplane. Next we flew the Explorer by FMS. This 3-cell, 4-channel airplane was the first and only plane we have featured with a flight surface known as a canalizer. Unfortunately, this airplane never was one of our favorite planes we reviewed. Now, it was unique and was fun to fly, but it did have its drawbacks. First off, when landing this airplane, it likes to land at a slight nose-down attitude, which is usually not an issue, but due to its shorter landing gear, this can at times cause the prop to strike the ground. We also did not like how easily this model was prone to tip stalling. And it was that very issue that cut our review short when the plane tip stalled and went straight into the ground. But even though this is one of the worst crashes we had on our channel, we learned a lot from it. Next we flew the Blade 230 SV2. This awesome helicopter was the second full size one we have featured on our channel. First off, we loved how this helicopter was equipped with safe mode for new flyers. It was also a very powerful performer when you wanted it to be. We also were blown away with how well the helicopter safe mode did its job when Damon attempted a flip but quickly had to switch safe mode back on when things were out of his control. Myself and Damon both agreed this was a great helicopter for a beginner intermediate flyer, and when you add in great flight times and great overall flight characteristics, we couldn't help but give this awesome helicopter a perfect review score. Our next review takes us back to the warm summer days back in 2019, where we flew the FT Edge 540 from Flight Test. This amazing 3D airplane was our third foam core model from Flight Test we had reviewed. It was a four channel airplane powered by a four cell battery, and when it came to the electronics, the airplane was equipped with Flight Test CPAC setup. We were very impressed with how this one flew. It was an amazing performer, but it could also be very docile when you wanted it to be. And just like all of the flight test products, we love the price point of this model compared to other similar aircraft. And the only issue we could find was that the landing gear was a little weak to our liking. But with that aside, we had a great time with this one, and we gave it a very positive review. Next we flew the F-15 from E-Flight. This awesome ductive fan jet was the first 4-cell jet we reviewed. It was a 4-channel airplane powered by a 64mm ducted fan unit. It was also equipped with safe mode along with the AS3X system. It was a fast and agile performer with some very unjet like docile flight tendencies, which included very predictable stall characteristics along with a very good glide slope. Which it was so good in fact that I actually had to flare the jet a bit to get it to land, since it would outglide our massive landing space with ease. We were also very impressed with how well this jet flew compared to any other ductive fan jets we had flown. Myself and Damon praised E-Flight for how well they had set up this awesome airplane. And the only issue we could find with this model was the fact that E-Flight had decided to have both the jet's elevators glued on rather than screwed onto the airframe, which Damon and I had seen this decision as a potential failure point. But despite that issue, we had a great time with this one, and it still stands as my favorite ducted fan jet. Next we flew the Timber X by E-Flight. This six-channel airplane was capable of flying on three to four cell packs, and was the first airplane we featured with the ability to use a flight surface called flapperons. Which for those who don't know, this meant that when the flyer wanted to transition from scale to 3D flying, they could flip a switch and the airplane's flaps would work together with the ailerons to create much larger flight surfaces, which these did their job very well. We also loved how this airplane was equipped with safe mode and the AS3X system. It was a great scale of flyer with great 3D performance. We also loved the airplane's massive landing gear and tire setup. These massive tires made this airplane capable of taking off from almost any surface. And the only issues we could find were that the airplane was prone to tip stalling during certain maneuvers, and we also did not like the nylon screws E-Flight had chosen to use to hold the main wings to the airframe. But despite those issues, we loved this model and we gave it a great review score. 
Next we flew a long discontinued product called the Mini Gamma from Ares. I had originally purchased this airplane for my wife about two years before this review. She did fly it and she did get some enjoyment out of it, but the airplane had a couple issues with it that kept her from progressing in the hobby, which Damon and I learned all of too well. First, the airplane was meant to be a trainer airplane and it did come equipped with three flight modes. The first two modes were gyro assistant and they did their job pretty well, but the airplane on these modes had a weird tendency to fly better in a left hand turn than it did in the right. And we also learned that when you turn the gyro off, this was always the result. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Doing better than you. Oh. Ain't a lot, man. It's hard to tell. It's such a tiny plane. But, oh. <laughs> oh, I'm losing it. This is actually. Oh, oh. Well, wait, oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, what are you doing? Nice and carefully. Whee! I don't even know where you went. Oh, 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 Alright guys, that was a look back at all of the RC reviews we have done over the past 5 years. Damon and I wanted to express our appreciation to all of our awesome viewers. And we wanted to thank all of you for helping us reach 500 subscribers. This may seem like a small number, but it's an incredible milestone for us. And we wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you. And we cannot wait to see what we fly for you in the near future. Memorable titles as Outrun with some 